Ah, hi. Looking at uh, 11AX and Wi-Fi 6, I wanted to throw some light on a topic which uh, sounds interesting because uh, scheduled uplink transmissions are possible, but are we still going to do carrier sensing for those? So that's the question I want to tackle today. My name is uh, Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So one of the challenges for Wi-Fi, of course, Wi-Fi, remember, operates only in unlicensed bands, is that we have introduced uplink scheduling where the AP, through the use of a trigger frame, can tell the stations associated with that AP to transmit at specific you know, times, frequency resources, spatial streams with this MCS and power, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. However, being an unlicensed band, other people can also use this spectrum at the same time at around the same place. And what if they were hidden from the AP which had sent the original trigger frame? What happens then is the station which is triggered, let's say for example station A here, sends its transmission and that unfortunately interferes with this receiver and this is added disadvantage okay so how can we avoid that is the question that we want to answer remember that um, I, I maybe have mentioned this before unlike cellular system our Wi-Fi generations if you take the 5 gigahertz they're all sharing potentially the same spectrum and if they're all deployed in the same let's say rough room etc office apartment building we can't be unfriendly to a previous generation okay so that's the sort of thing which could happen here so what does the standards do about this so what the standards do is even though the ap sends a trigger frame triggering multiple stations to send their transmissions it also has the option in the trigger frame in the common field to say that everybody who has been triggered for transmission here should check the channel before transmitting. So this means that the trigger frame is not giving you a full right to the channel, but is actually asking you to check the channel and only if it is free, then you can transmit. And when we say checking the channel, the normal checking of the channel applies, which is both physical and virtual carrier sensing. Okay. Are there any exceptions? Yes. Just like in the previous uh, cases, generations, where we did not have to carrier sense for transmissions like acknowledgement or CTS, so-called atomic transactions. Here also, the access point, when it sends a trigger frame, can make this CS request off for transmissions of that type. In fact, the standard specifically says, uh, looking at some byte size or up approximate time for which it is triggered, etc. There are some trigger frames which are piggybacked along with the data in terms of the MAC header. They are also not required to ask their triggered stations to carry a sense. Okay. So this is the flexibility that uh, the standard is interest uh, are rather introduced so that we can still live nicely with uh, various other unlicensed band devices, even including other Wi-Fi networks, while we still go and do our old things for things like ACK, CTS, etc. Let's see an example. So in this case, AP is uh, triggering four of its uh, associated stations. Uh, three of them don't seem to have anybody uh, around them, but one of these has some activity. Let's say it's Wi-Fi activity, okay, going on. So when the AP asks uh, all these stations to transmit in the same time, but let's say in this case, different resources, in this case, like an OFDMA, uh, different RUs, and it says CS required for all of them. Now, what does everybody do? Everybody actually has to do at least this physical carrier sensing 
because remember there is only about six time in between so one slot physical carrier sensing or if you have some existing navs etc that can also be taken into account okay so one slot physical carrier sensing is the physical time that you will have to spend look at energy detection thresholds which are minus 62 dbm for 20 megahertz and if the channel is free then you transmit so in this case very likely these guys um, transmitted and this guy because he has let's say something was going on here there's a chance that this guy will not transmit okay now they only have to look at the corresponding 20 megahertz so if station once i did not point out to station one having to look at these channels station one has to look at this 20 megahertz and see if there is any energy there okay so this is the way by which we make sure that even though we have triggered but we don't disturb other transmissions which have gotten off the air and just because they are hidden from the ap they should not suffer okay so i hope that was a useful insight so for more information please visit our website and if you're interested in Wi-Fi 6 courses or other advanced courses, please visit Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thank you. Have a nice day.